Welcome back to the Happy Camper, coming to you as always from the beautiful mountains of Southwest Montana. Today we are shooting on location at our at our sponsor's dealership, which is Rocky Mountain RV in beautiful Butte, Montana. Their website is rockymtnrv.com, and right here at the top of the video, we'd like to thank them for for providing the inventory that we review in our videos. Today I'm standing in the 2020 Aspen Trail. 2810 BHS travel trailer by Dutchman. This is pound for pound and dollar for dollar probably the best family camping trailer on the market. It does everything well. It has very few deficiencies. It's a great floor plan. It's towable with a half ton pickup. It sleeps a lot of people and is very roomy with the super slide out. Let's take a quick look around this unit and get you an idea of what we're looking at. For 2020 Aspen Trail has lightened their floor color. They've stuck with more of a darker wood color but a very light countertop and added a great looking backsplash in behind the sink and the stove. Up above in the kitchen there there's some overhead cabinetry, great storage drawers, and door underneath the sink. The sink in this is a farm style stainless steel single bowl sink with a high rise faucet and a single lever giving it a nice clean look. It's well molded here into the countertop so cleanups very easy. And of course with being a stainless steel sink it'll take some abuse and it's really a nice feature in this price point of unit. Your drawers in the Aspen Trail are on a full extension ball bearing roller guide. They're a plywood box to give you a little extra strength. And these aren't like the old drawers where you had to pick them up to pull out, that kind of thing. And these, these will hand, hold up very well over dirt roads and rough uh, washboard roads, that type of thing. Dutchman is using the new Furion range in this unit with the glass flush countertop cover and that's a really really nice oven it does add additional countertop space here with keeping the range top and the countertop at the same level 100 percent glass here so it's again if you get any splatter on here it's extremely easy to clean it does give us a little guard against the window there the range amazingly does have a window and a light which i never thought i'd see in the rv industry but that's a really nice new feature and of course this is LP gas or propane is what that operates on. Moving back we're looking at the refrigerator. This is a Norcold six cubic foot double door refrigerator. This has got a single button control. It couldn't be easier to use. The one thing about these refrigerators, years ago they used to have an on off auto and LP gas. So auto, if it has electricity, if you're plugged in in a park or at home, it's automatically going to try to run on electricity. If it doesn't have electricity, it will automatically switch over to gas and continue to run. If you change it just to a gas setting, then it would run strictly on gas. These fridges don't have that option. It's a simple little button here. Push to turn it on push to turn it off. It adjusts its own temperature and again it is going to run only in what, what used to be the auto mode. So again it will look for electricity first. If it doesn't have it, it will automatically switch over to gas and start running there. That's a, a fine system other than when you're out camping and you are running on a generator you can run into the issue that your generator, when a, again, like when trying to run an, an air conditioning on a 3,000 watt generator, that's about as much as you can as you can run on a 3,000. So if you run into that and your fridge, as soon as you start your generator, your fridge wants to turn on to electric, and then it won't run your air conditioning, what you need to do is go to the service access outside with this style of fridge and simply unplug the refrigerator and then it will force it to run turn over and run on gas. So that's that's a little bit of a workaround and I may do a, an actual video, a tech tip video on just that particular item. Uh, if we have time today I will go through that procedure as well. So just again keep in mind that there is a little downfall to that fridge but it is a nice little easy to use system. Alright I'm moving on back here. We're going to look into the storage cabinets here next to the refrigerator. They are extremely large. 
and they do a great job. The lower cabinet, which I think is interesting, they've set up with a, a hanging rod. Again, so that would kind of service the rear bunk bed so the kids have a spot to put their clothes. Above it is shelved as a pantry, so you can have food storage and that type of thing up here. Really interesting setup there and, and well thought out as far as I'm concerned. Coming on back to the back, the bathroom is back here in the back corner. And this does, of course, have a little tub. Aspen Trail does run a plastic shower surround that covers the wall board on the three sides, as well as an overhead skylight, which is a great feature to add some natural light into this bathroom. I really like the fact you can come in here in the daytime out camping, not have to turn a light on, and you get some natural light. You have a little built-in shelf there, which is nice. It comes with kind of your standard little shower curtain. But, of course, the first thing you do is run down to your local warehouse store and get you a new, uh, a new shower curtain so this thing can look like your own. You will notice that the bathroom has an access door from outside. And, again, a kind of a unique feature about the 2810 Aspen Trail. This door is going to allow you access without having to walk entirely through the trailer. So again, if you have somebody that's out around a campfire uh, and you need to just step in and use the bathroom, then they don't have to traipse through your whole trailer and get your floor muddy. You can step right in, use the bathroom, and then right back out. Uh, over here to the left, of course, uh, sink and vanity. Pretty standard affair there. It does have a built-in medicine cabinet, which again, you'll see a lot of companies delete. Let's figure out how to open it here. There we go. And you're seeing a lot of companies delete this and just have a mirror screwed to the wall. And the problem with that is, of course, you just lose the storage in these little bathrooms. And it's extremely hard to, uh, to get enough storage to start with. So any little bit helps. Um, of course, standard plastic toilet over here. And that's going to be a Thetford. I believe it's an Aquamagic 5. There's a lot of people that make a big deal out of a porcelain toilet. And if that's something that you do want, it's a simple two little bolts and a water line to change out really simple and easy to do and again one day soon i may do a tech tip video on just how to change that out to a porcelain uh porcelain toilet now is around 200 dollars depending on where you're looking at it from really again if you find a coach that you like that's at the right price but it's got a plastic toilet and you want a porcelain it's really a simple thing to change don't let that deter you uh, again we'll try to do some of these tech tips to make some of these little upgrades easy and and quick and easy to understand all right Coming out of the bathroom, the back corner is going to house our double over double bunks. And these are really nice big bunk beds. I like the fact that Aspen Trail does just a half wall here on the front. So the upper bunk is very open to the main floor of the coach. And then people that are sleeping up there don't feel so enclosed. And the bottom bunk is very open as well. We do have some privacy curtains, of course. And then a little built-in ladder. These are the Teddy Bear Bunk Mattress Pads, so they're really comfortable, nice little pads. Um, again, these are going to be about the size of a double. They kind of have this little bit of an angle from here back over to here, just to be able to allow that uh, bathroom door to swing a little bit more. They, they have installed the uh, USB ports. There's a double USB port in each bed, as well as an overhead LED light. The top window there course has a little covering on it your bottom bunk there's your LED a pretty nice little space back up here off on the off door side we're gonna look at the super slide out and this is the big super slide the Dutchman Aspen Trail uses in this product you can see the big picture window this is gonna be a full u-shaped dinette and that's a nice big sleeper slash uh, dinette table so of course the table does drop down into your lower benches and the back cushions will complete to make an additional bed if you need it with for extra company and then the nice thing with that is it's about seven and a half feet long so you can sleep full-size adults on it it's not just a, a spot where you can put little kids or whatever it will work okay for adults as you can see we have good ventilation windows in the slide out overhead cabinets up here above the sofa and again, something that's made a huge difference and that messes with the lens, but the LED lighting that's in here uh, really provides nice, clean light as well as very, very energy efficient. And that's a big thing, especially when you get out in the backwoods of Montana. We don't have electricity. Uh, you don't want to have to run your generator all the time. So it's nice to have that lighting that conserves 
the battery power. Uh, again, depending on your on your dealer, your batteries are going to be the weakest link when you're dry camping. Uh, propane goes a very long time, and I know that this particular model, um, you know, does carry dual propane tanks. It also has the space for dual batteries. Now, depending on your dealer, is whether or not they're going to install dual batteries. Here at our sponsor's location at Rocky Mountain, they do install two Group 24 Interstate batteries, which is the biggest batteries they can fit two of on the tongue, and that is included in the pricing in the unit. So again, you gotta, you gotta be careful with your dealer there, ask them what they do, or better yet, just come buy one from our sponsors, and you'll know you're gonna get it set up right. The sofa in this particular model is the standard jackknife sofa from Dutchman. It's a nice little sofa. It is a, a leather product or a leather type product. Uh, it does have a flip down backrest there with the built-in cup holders. This does lay out flat into a bed. And I noticed it does have a little storage access here, which that's a really neat little setup. You can do additional blankets or whatever you, whatever you might like in there. Finishing up the off door side here, we're coming up into the bedroom and I'm gonna step back here and just get a shot of the bedroom separation wall and there that is and it's going to have a little door that rolls out on each either side to close off the front bedroom this is also the tv location and you'll see they have it stickered here for a tv location bracket uh that is does have backing in the wall there where you can mount a tv a lot of people say well it doesn't have a tv well it's really not a big issue if you order the tv out of the factory you're going to pay in excess of 600 dollars for a 32 inch tv where again you can source one locally get a little bracket mount it in here and probably get the job done for around 200 250 dollars so really again i look at that as the dealership that orders them especially a unit like this where not everybody in the world wants a tv a dealership that will order it without and give you the option and again the guys inside will, will be happy to uh, to set this unit up with a TV for you if you're not comfortable installing it yourself that's just another option and added value they're not just putting every option in and not thinking about the long term or the the final end users cost when you get uh, when you get into these units again this is something that people are gonna buy to take their camp their family out camping they want to control the cost so again, let's not put options in that are overcharged from the factory. If we want it, we can do it here. If we don't, we're just simply ready to run. This does have an AM, FM, CD, as well as a DVD player. This little unit is a DVD, and that will string up and hook into the, uh, into the um, TV above if you need it to. Front bedroom in the 2810 is going to house a queen-size bed. And uh, I believe that this is a 75 inch queen, although now that I'm looking at it, it looks like it should be an 80. I'll put it in the description there. I will take a measurement on it. I just don't have a tape in my hand right now. I'll take a measurement on it though, and I will put it in the description of this video so you know exactly what it has. It's definitely a 60 inch wide, so queen sheets are what's gonna fit this unit. Um, and again, it's, uh, it, it's just it's good to have a, a decent bed so you can go out and get a comfortable night's sleep when you're out and about. At the head of the bed, they've added a little uh, shiplap uh, accent wall in there. And just again, for some aesthetics, we do have a, an LED light on each side of the bed for reading, as well as one here above my head on the main ceiling. And that gives us plenty of light. You'll also notice ventilation windows on both sides of the unit here, so we can get a cross breeze. We also have... Uh, 110 volt electrical outlets on both sides of the bed and a little nightstand built in. Up in the front we have a little hanging closet on each side with a shelf built in above it and again a shelf up above across the front. So it's a nice little be bedroom you know it's it's nothing super extravagant but it's everything that you need. We do have storage here under the foot of the bed as well that just picks up pretty simple. And again these are hard doors that close off the bedroom from the main floor of the unit come across and give you a nice private bedroom again we are shooting here at the dealership today so it is a little noisy we're right up on the street here where we get to film our units the the montana winter has our road closed right now to our normal shooting location so we're just kind of trying to do the best that we can and not have a gap in our videos here just because the uh, old man winter is set in in Montana. Here's a little storage door again as you come in the f in the door of the unit. Really a nice setup there. Um, gives you additional storage. 
it just works pretty well. Of course, safety equipment here next to the door. The main doorway in and out, we have a screen on that door. Um, and of course, deadbolt locking, that type of thing. The other thing I forgot to mention about this is we do have a little spot here that you can slide your shoes in underneath on that because it always seems like uh, if you come in and take your shoes off, you need a place to get them out of the doorway. And Dutchman did think of that on this model. Go over some quick spec specifications on this unit before we walk outside. I'm going to get a, a weight right on the sticker as we walk out the door. And the interesting thing with these, this unit is built in Pendleton, Oregon. And it is uh, weighed, each unit is weighed as it comes off the assembly line. They run them right across the, the scale, and then they put a sticker in the doorway to give you the exact dry weight with the options that are on it. Now again, to that, you're always still going to have to add batteries, water, propane, and your gear. Okay, So you got to figure, on a unit like this, you're going to add about 1,000 pounds to the dry weight to get your actual real world real world towing weight. The other number you're going to see is a GVRW or a GVW, which is the gross of vehicle weight rating, and that's just what the axles are rated to carry. So if your axles are rated to carry, in this particular case, this, tra this trailer is GVW'd at 9,680 pounds, that again is what the axles are rated to carry, not at all what the trailer weighs. And of course, axles only come in certain weight ra ranges, so they just there's a big range on what goes in each unit. Uh, the fresh water tank in this is 52 gallons. The gray is 42, and the black is 42 gallons. So you're going to have good capacities. Uh, again, we will um, we'll get a, an actual weight sticker on it as we come out the door. The trailer overall length total. Now, of course, again, they call this a 2810, which would signify a 28 foot platform or, or footprint. And this is, of course, a 28-foot unit or model, they would call it. But it is actually going to measure in with the tongue and the bumper and the spare tire and all the things you put on here at about 32 feet 11 inches. And again, that's about, uh, about the right size to be able to get around behind even a half-ton pickup, that type of thing, into the backwoods camping areas. So that's a, that's a big deal, in my opinion, um, to know that, that, of course, the unit may say 28 on the outside. And you, what you're looking at is probably about a 28-foot living space, but the real length on it is 32 foot 11. If you are trying to put it into a certain spot, that's an important number to know. All right, before we step out the door here again, it's going to be a little bit noisy. The breeze isn't too bad out there today, but we are uh, we do have cars going by pretty regularly. Uh, just another look at the, uh, the colors and the inside of the 2810 before we step out the door. All right, let's walk on out and take a, a look. The weight sticker that I was speaking of is located right here inside the doorway. This particular unit, as you can see there, weighed in at 6,490 pounds as it came off the assembly line. Back up here and get a, an overview of the whole unit. And Aspa Trail has gone through some changes this year. The most obvious and evident is the color change to the outside. And they were pretty due for that. They've had the, kind of the same color scheme for several years. Uh, did a lot of dark grays. And they've gone to this kind of this light tan with a dark accent on it. I think it really has a nice, nice look. Um, again, this is a, a fairly low-priced RV. It's not going to be on the higher end of things, but it's got a lot of really nice features and a really nice look. The one thing I'll notice here is the front profile is very rounded on the 2810 versus a lot of other things on the market. There's several other units that are built even in the same building as this that have a very flat front end. And again, that's just going to save us some towability on it. It's going to cut the wind better, fuel mileage be a little better towing a unit like this. And they did do, the other thing that I like about it, is they did this smooth metal on the front. And that does a couple of things. Again, better aerodynamics as well as... When you get all those bugs plastered all over the front, they're so much easier to get them off of a smooth surface than it is corrugation. So again, just another interesting little item that they've done on the new 2810. Up front, this year they did add the power tongue jack, which is a great, great feature. It's got an extendable leg to get us up on some of these bigger pickups, or if we're on unlevel ground, it's very easy to work with. Again here, Underneath the cover is going to be two 20-pound LP tanks. They have this little access door up here so you can turn them on and off. And again, 20, two 20-pound 20 tanks is going to be very sufficient for weekend camping. 
Back here behind it, you've got the uh, battery tray, and that is where the, the batteries would be mounted. This unit is brand new, and they have not mounted the batteries on it yet here at Rocky Mountain, but again, they do install dual Group 24 interstates there in that location, and that will be done before you pick the unit up, and they are included in the cost of the unit when you purchase from our sponsors here. Coming down the side, this unit is pre-wired for the Furion um, solar panel which again, the Furion connector there, you can get an adapter that'll go over to the GoPower stuff. Some of my earlier summertime videos had our little GoPower panel in it that's plugged directly into that, and it comes with the panel to make that work. This is our belly storage compartment, and it's gonna be very wide, very open, gives us lots of space. It does have a light here around the corner, so we can light that up, and it's got a big door on each side. Access it from either side. They did do this little magnet catch up here on the top as well. And that is a really nice little feature so you're not having little clips break on you all the time. Here's another feature that Aspen Trail has gone to this year. And I have some mixed feelings about this. These are electric stabilizer jacks and they did a set on the front and the rear. They're just simply a push button there. They're self-proportioning so as they come down to the ground they'll touch and then the other one will come down and catch up and touch and, and uh, touch and then they pressure up together. The two issues that I have with these is they are fairly expensive. Um, again, Aspen Trail has decided it's a feature that they wanted to go to this year to add a little more value to their coach. But these are not leveling jacks. They will not pick the trailer up, and the, and the troubles that I've seen with them are people that first get them, don't know exactly what they're doing with them. They'll either put too much pressure on them and bend them, and then that creates a major problem. They think it's a warranty issue, and truly it's a user error issue. Um, so it, it does create some problems. So you do got to be aware they're not made to lift the trailer off the ground. They're just simply there to take the, the rock and the bounce out of the inside. The other thing is when you do damage these type of jacks, they are fairly expensive. Uh, a pair of these runs around $450. So again, a unit with hand crank jacks, the little, the little ones you twist or put your drill on and run them down. You know, again, that's probably my preferred method, but these are nice and, and they do add some value to the trailer if you use them properly. Of course, this runs a triple entry step and it's the aluminum the aluminum style to keep the weight down a little bit. We have a large grab handle straight out of the factory. You can see there Aspen Trail is a three-year structural limited warranty. And of course, this unit has a, a one-year, 12-month bumper-to-bumper. Kind of covers everything in there except for your maintenanceable items. And then the, uh, the, the additional two years on top of that will cover any major components. That'd be wall structures, um, frame, floor, roof, those type of things are all covered underneath that three-year warranty. So it is a little limited, but it, again, if you have a major issue, that's when Dutchman's going to step in and help you out. 15-inch rubber underneath the unit here. This is a, a powder-coated gray wheel with a, with a beauty ring or a beauty cap on it. It's a nice-looking wheel and tire combination. Nothing super fancy, but I think it does the job well. Uh, Dutchman does run the six-gallon gas electric um, DSI water heater, which means of course it's a spark ignition from inside. You just flip the switch on and it will do its thing. And then of course it does have the electric option in it as well, which will be which will be signified by this little switch right down in here. And that's the electric switch on and off. Alright, furnace exhaust is there, and of course service access for the refrigerator this little outside shower, and then we do have the Santa flush system on here as well, so that you can hook the hose up to when you're dumping your black tank, and it will flush out the black tank and keep that clear of any extra debris, and of course, uh, keep the smell down, and that's a really nice feature that they do out of the factory as well. Coming around the back of the coach, again, you can see your uh, rear stabilizer jack switch there. Again, it's just extend, retract, pretty simple. We're coming around the back of the coach here, of course, spare tire is mounted to the rear bumper. The rear bumper is going to house your sewer hose when you're traveling. And beyond that, it's a pretty standard affair. We do have, up on the top there, we are pre-wired for the Furion um, 
the Fury on a little backup camera, and we found that those are really nice because you can mount that up there. It does have both a color picture, and it's wireless up to the cab of your pickup. It has a little screen with an antenna. It's wireless up to the cab of the pickup, and it's also got sound built in. And the cool thing about that is it seems like whenever you're trying to back a trailer in, your guiding partner wants to be standing behind the trailer so they can see, but they don't understand that you can't see them. So the rear backup camera, you can see your partner. You can also hear what they're saying. You can't talk to them, but they can talk to you. And that's really a nice feature. Uh, it's fairly inexpensive, and Dutchman did put the little pre-mount pre pod on there, and it is all wired up. So again, a, a really a nice feature for them. Overall, again, the 2810 Aspen Trail, and I'm sorry, I did not mention the power awning there with the LED light strip, and that is a nice big awning. It covers both doorways. And of course, with it being power, it's so simple. You push the button, it goes out. You push the button, it comes in. Anybody can do it, including your kids, your wife, or whomever. Maybe, maybe back at the trailer if the wind comes up. Or again, it starts raining, you want it run out. So again, really a nice feature. So once again, we'd like to thank our sponsors here at Rocky Mountain RV for providing this unit for us to take a look at. We thank you for stopping by the Happy Camper. And we'd certainly like to see you back again. If you like this video, like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next time. Thanks again.